I've set up hundreds of Braze webhooks to work with tons of different Braze API endpoints, and I've decided to make a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up Braze webhooks so you can also become a technical marketer and make these API calls. The good news is that the setup process is quite consistent for many, many API endpoints. So this tutorial should cover a majority of your use cases with the Braze API. Also, I will be linking this video in all my future videos moving forward that requires any sort of Braze webhook setup. And my hope is that this video can be the ultimate tutorial video for any Braze webhook setup explanation so that I don't have to repeat the same instructions in my future videos. And trust me, there will be plenty more tutorial videos with webhooks in the future. So please bookmark, favorite, like, and share this video. What's up everyone? My name is Alan, founder and consultant at For Now Marketing, and welcome back to our channel. Before we get started, if you have any questions, whether you are currently using Braze or are considering using Braze, please feel free to reach out. You can find these addresses and more in the YouTube description below. Today, we are going to talk through how to set up Braze webhooks to make API calls. Let's get started. Before we get our hands dirty with building Braze webhooks, let's spend some time talking about APIs in general, starting with the question, why API? So there is a ton of different Braze API endpoints that all offer a different capability. I like to think of API endpoints as customer support phone extensions, dial one for billing, dial two for orders, etc. And just like those customer support extensions, Braze has different API endpoints that each offer a different capability, except Braze has about 100 different API endpoints. And many of these API endpoints offer capabilities that are not available on the dashboard UI. Because to build a dashboard UI, the Braze team has to spend their product design and engineering resources to determine how to make certain features available in the dashboard, what buttons to create, what functionalities to add. So there's a lot of work that gets involved with creating UI uh, for, for the Braze team. And not all features are absolutely necessary to be built in the dashboard. Instead, those features are available via the API. And sometimes the marketer can feel a little bit stuck when working with Braze because there are so many features that are only available via the API, like deleting users, scheduling campaigns, and more. However, watch until the end of this video and you'll be one step closer to becoming a technical marketer who is confident with using Braze webhooks to make API calls in Braze. Let's briefly explore the different categories of API endpoints that Braze offers. So we have campaigns and canvas, which allows us to retrieve some information about each of our campaigns and canvases. So retrieve a daily series, retrieve relevant information, export a list of campaigns, and then similar for the canvases. There is a bunch of catalogs, adding and editing and deleting uh, items in your catalogs uh, programmatically. Same thing with content blocks. List our existing ones, get some information, create and update. Braze recently launched some additional features with the Preference Center. And for every new feature launch, keep an eye out for additional API endpoints uh, to supplement these new launches. Subscription groups have a few endpoints for themselves. And lastly, the category that use the most frequently, the user data endpoints. And among these, I use the user's export IDS very frequently because this endpoint is very helpful for grabbing data from each user. And it's nice because we can query by email addresses. I also started using users merge, uh, which is a relatively new endpoint. And it's an awesome endpoint that helps many Braze teams resolve duplicate profiles because let's be real, we've all been through or are going through duplicate profile issues. And then users track the most frequently used Braze endpoint by far, which is used to log profile attributes, custom attributes, custom events, and more. So I would strongly recommend that you take some time to go through these different categories and become familiar with what API capabilities exist in Braze, because I'm sure you'll find many features that you didn't even know were possible with Braze. Okay, it's finally time to start building our Braze webhooks. So for our tutorial today, we'll build a webhook template so that for all future uses of the Braze webhook, we can get started much more quickly. Navigate to templates, webhook templates, blank template, and we'll call this template Braze webhook main template. Oops. And the first field to address is the webhook URL. And I want you to pause this video and take a look at your Braze dashboards URL 
And that's where you can find which server you're in. So if you look at my URL, I'm at dashboard 2 braze EU. And once again, that's how I can find which Braze dashboard server that I am in. And depending on where you are in the world and when you purchase Braze, you may have a different server than mine. So once you've located your server, go to the API overview page, which I will link in the description below and find your rest endpoint. So it's this middle column that you're looking for. And the URL is simply for your dashboard URL. The SDK endpoint is for the engineers to work with when they're integrating Braze SDK. And then the rest endpoint is what we will need for our API calls. So I will copy the EU02 rest endpoint and paste it into my webhook URL back in my Braze webhook template, just like this. And I'm gonna delete that extra space. Now I wanna clarify that when you're actually building a webhook, you're going to have to add more to this webhook URL. What we've grabbed so far is simply the root of our API endpoint, but it's not the complete webhook URL that we'll need for our API calls. However, if you visit any API documentation page, for example, I'm on the user's track uh, endpoint documentation page, right here at the very top, you'll find the specific API endpoint that you'll need to add to the end of your webhook URL. So once again, if I wanted to use the user's track API endpoint, then I will go to this API documentation page, copy this endpoint, and then go back to my webhook URL and paste it at the end of the root link that we included earlier. And now this webhook URL is complete and ready to be used. Next, let's navigate to the settings page. And this is where we add request headers. And I like to think of these as some behind the scenes data I require for the API call to work success successfully. The good news is that the request headers are consistent for the large majority of the API endpoints. So you most likely won't have to change these much. Uh, once again, on every API documentation page, you will see these request headers at the top of the request body section. And they're often very consistent. So we have content type set to application slash JSON, and then we have authorization set to bear your REST API key. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy parts of these. I'm gonna go back to our webhook template, add a new pair, add the first key, and go back and grab the value, which is application slash JSON, add another pair of key value pairs or request headers. And this time I'm gonna grab authorization, paste it in here. And then one last thing, I'll copy the whole thing for now, bear your REST API key. Although obviously the your REST API key part is a placeholder for now. And over the years, I've experimented multiple times. And although I strongly, strongly encourage that you just simply copy and paste the values directly from the documentation into your webhook, I have learned that these uh, values, I can lowercase all of these and the API call will still work successfully. Uh, but once again, why bother when we can just copy and paste from the documentation directly? Okay, we are almost there with our settings tab, except the API key. So let's go over that process next. So each API endpoint needs to be provided with an API key that is enabled for that specific endpoint. So to create an API key, let's navigate in a new tab, settings, APIs, and identifiers. We will create a new API key. And here you can see a list of every single API endpoint that you see on the Braze documentation. So every single one of these checkboxes mirror every single API endpoint that we saw on the Braze documentation. Find the API key that you want. So we will choose the user's track one. I'll call this user's track. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and click save API key. And this API key that I just created is going to be the API key that I need back in my webhook template. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. Go back to our webhook and replace the your REST API key with the one I just copied. And because I've just exposed this API key, I will now delete this API key after our recording, because once again, you always wanna make sure that your API keys are secured and not exposed. Now you might be thinking, well, why can't I just create an API key that has every single one of these checkboxes enabled? And yes, you can do that. And in fact, many teams have an all access API key, and you may have seen mine as well. However, there are two concerns with this approach. One, it's just riskier in case your API key ever gets exposed. 
the entryway to every single API capability in your Braze dashboard is now compromised. The evil villain can now use up all your data points, send thousands of emails, and delete all your users. And for security purposes, I recommend only enabling the endpoints that are absolutely necessary for that specific use case. And two, Braze is adding new API endpoints all the time. So when there are new API endpoints created, your all access key won't actually be an all access key anymore. So at this point, we are actually done with our webhook template. Um, so let's go ahead and click save template on the bottom right corner. And this will be the webhook template that we can use for the majority of Braze webhooks moving forward. But the last thing I'll talk about briefly is the request body. And this won't be a part of our template setup because a request body is actually different for every single endpoint and probably the most difficult part of each webhook setup. Going back to the API documentation page, every page will offer some sort of example request body that you can use as a starting point. So there is the request body section, which will actually include all the definitions and explanations and all these um, that descriptions will actually break your code. So I wouldn't use that as your starter code, but scroll down a little bit and you will start to see example requests. So I would start grabbing from the left curly bracket right next to the words data raw right after the single quote, all the way down to the bottom of the closing bracket, but not including that single quote. I would copy that and use that as my starter code. And that's usually the process that I take when I set up new Braze webhooks um, and I add or delete as needed. This starter code may actually have a little too much information for me so that maybe I might start with something shorter like this one. Every API endpoint does take a little bit of reading, learning, research, and debugging for syntax errors when working with APIs. But I promise the more you practice, the easier it gets. For example, I have spent many hours looking for a missing double quote, a missing semicolon, a missing comma. So whatever that might be, it gets easier to find some of those syntax issues. So this webhook setup tutorial will end here now as the video was all about setting up a Braze webhook. However, if there are any specific API endpoints that you'd like me to make a tutorial for, please let me know in the comments and I will try my best to surprise you with a very quick tutorial video. That's it for today. If you have any questions, please share them in the comments below. We're happy to help. If you learned something new from this video, please subscribe for more awesome Braze videos in the future. Thank you for watching and see you next time.